Good morning, guys. Carl, Jonathan, James, and Ed's here. Here's Thomas. You guys are so faithful. Good morning, men. You had a good week? Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, James. Yeah, he was trying to get me to lay in bed this morning, and I had I said, "Nope, gotta get up." <laughs> <laughs> it's early for you. Yeah, I spent a. I was up at five forty. I spent a little bit on my knees first. That's I do that every morning. Awesome practice. I, uh, I tend to, I tend to, um, this first thing I do when, when I wake up in the morning is to start praying to God. And a lot of times my wife is either already up and gone or, <laughs> or she's still asleep and it's just a peaceful time. Well, uh, let, me, let me pray us in and Hopefully, guys will be showing up and joining us. Uh, but we're just glad you guys are all here. And God will bless. God will bless us this morning, I feel like. Yes. Heavenly Father. Mm. Abba, Father. Lord, we come to you uh, this day. We rejoice. We rejoice in what you've given us what you've put us through so that we can come and be here today with the story that you've given us to this point. And Lord, we just look forward to spending time together again this morning and knowing you through these men and our experiences and how we can be the iron that sharpens the iron together. So Lord, I just ask that you guide us Direct our conversation in your Holy Spirit so that we can see you better today and be uh, one with each other as we're one with you. So we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me make sure there's nobody else waiting. So... Uh, if we have time this morning, we'll try to do two um, speaker uh, sessions like I tried to do in the app. I didn't quite finish the action steps for the world vision, but we'll get to that today and then I'll post that after we're done. Or you guys can post a few things if, uh, based on what we talk about here. But, um, so Lewis and Andrew Palau. Um, Lewis Palau is a, another one of those longtime PK speakers and friends of the ministry. I um, don't think I'd ever really heard of or met his, his son, Andrew. Um, he probably talked about him often in his, in his, um, his messages over the years, but um, uh, just uh, it's been a it's been a blessing to be able to listen to him. Do you guys have any highlights or memories of, of uh, messages before or this message, uh, for which the key takeaway was, Lord, what do I tell my son? Who knows the gospel but isn't following you? God told me to simply love him and remind him that God has a plan and a purpose for his life. What do you guys think? Any, uh, any highlights that speak to you in some way? Well, I, I think what you've got is uh, a classic example of a prodigal son. And that's one that I that's one that through my youth ministry I, I've spoken about lots of times. Prodigal sons and prodigal daughters. Uh, 
you know, you don't want to lose you don't want to leave the daughters out of the equation. Yeah. Uh, but I think every time I read that story, I read I get something else out of it, and I I, I think maybe the most important thing statement that's made in that story is that the prodigal son eventually came to his senses. And I think that's what Andrew did in, the, in his life. And I think that's what we all do in our own lives is we've got to come to our senses and realize that, you know, uh, what uh, we've got to experience God's love for ourselves. We've got to know that, that God is with us no matter what the circumstance or the environment. And you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do and you got to come home from the Father. Anybody else? Anybody else have any experiences like this uh, yourself or your own kids? Or Yeah, uh, when I think about that type of scenario, it's the fact that when my son was at an impressionable age, we were going to church, um, but I, I wasn't completely connected to church. <laughs> um, we were in the Mormon faith at that time. Um, there were a number of things about it that didn't feel right to me. Um, but I took my kids to church almost every Sunday. And I was not living a life of a godly man either in the background. I was... I was actually the prodigal father at the time. Um, and then after, you know, after years and me and, me and their mother went our separate ways, uh, then my son sort of became a prodigal son. He got rebellious on his mom and uh, she basically kicked him out of the house and he went and lived with some friends. And, you know, then... I moved to California and my relationship with him and my daughter were just hit and miss, you know, once a year, fly them out, have some fun with them and talk to them along the way during the year. Uh, but my son, you know, quit going to church. Then after, after my disclosure to my wife three and a half years ago and, and to my children, uh, I lost contact with, with my son and daughter um, because they were angry with me. And for over a year, you know, my son wouldn't even talk to me. But then when, when we did start making contact again, praise God, um, he started actually going back to church. And so last Sunday, um, I've been watching the zooming into Colorado Springs to watch his services with him. Last Sunday, I thought I would test the waters a little bit since I've got my life together. I, I didn't send him a message directly after his services. I waited for a while and, you know, praise God, I got a message from him and he wanted to talk a little bit about what the service was about. And instead of, you know, putting a new, <laughs> putting a new fuel pump on his car and trying to get more uh, acceleration out of it. He was actually wanting to talk to me about the, the lesson. And I thought it was really great. It, you know, Malachi tells us the hearts of the children will return to the hearts of the father. And so I didn't return to the heart of my father, but I did my father in heaven. And, um, and my son has turned his heart back to me and to his father in heaven. And now I still got my prodigal daughter I'm working on, but, but I know in time that will happen too. All in God's time, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, if somebody wouldn't mind, maybe you could uh, look up Hebrews 9.14 and they read that to us. Um, and, so, and I'll do the, the reflection here is that uh, Lewis and Andrew Palau, they share a story of a wayward son and a loving father. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was their own story. A lengthy season of rebellion met with, <clears throat> excuse me, a lengthy season of fatherly truth and grace. The story includes what Lewis did to patiently love his son and how God redeemed and restored the original calling that was prophetically promised over Andrew's life. 
Um, I don't know. Yeah. So somebody, somebody have Hebrews nine fourteen. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead and read it if you have it. Okay. Uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, offered Himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So, where in your life are you feeling that your your sin or your rebellion disqualified you from serving the kingdom of God? Every day, saying, every day of my life, uh, you know, three and a half years ago and prior to that, every day of my life, I was in that particular situation. <laughs> Yeah, is uh, but it's good to know now, right? That it was just a feeling. Yes, it was absolutely. Just an internal thing, right? Um, you know, I can tell you based on <clears throat> based on our discussion last week, what I was telling you guys, um, I certainly felt disqualified uh, for a long time. <coughs> and, you know, from that time, <clears throat> you know, I felt um, you know I was playing Texas high school football and be pretty uh, successful at that, even though I, was, I wasn't even a starter in my team in Plano. And for Jonathan, he probably knows where that is. Because um, <clears throat> I think you're in Conroe, right? We, we played you guys quite often uh, in your in your town anyway. But um, yeah, I played high school football and baseball, and I was all about myself. Uh, and then I I you know, went to college, it was still about me. And I think what I found later was all the, you know, my, my, my great grandmother and my grandmother and uh, grandfather and my dad, uh, they were all, all praying for me. And I had a lot of friends praying for me too, I think. And, you know, uh, sometimes I wish maybe some of them would like, put me in my place sometimes to have uh, been so uh, all about me. Because when it's about me, you're prodigal, right? You're, you're away from me. From Christ, um, and it's that's a choice. And um, you know, going through college, I had some some good friends, some good girlfriends that were just close to Christ, and they um, they kept me close. But um, you know, it was not till Promise Keepers in 1995 that I actually I think gave my life back to the Lord. I and mean, I told you, eight years old, I was sitting out on the on the on the uh, creek side. Uh, and God spoke to me. So I know I knew God then and, and I knew he had a purpose for my life. So that's my story. Glad God got my attention that, that year, uh, no matter how painful it was, but it, it's just good. It's good all the time. I've always loved the uh, prodigal son. Um, you know, I grew up uh, as a prodigal and likewise now uh, my son I I posted something about uh, going through some uh, some of these uh, hard times right now with uh, uh, my son with drug abuse um, and you know uh, it's being consistent um, you know with you know, I, I grew up in a uh, broken home. Uh, my father was uh, an alcoholic. So because of all that, um, coming to know Christ, I wanted to make a, a difference in my family. So we homeschooled and did all the right things. There was no alcohol in the house. And yet my son still goes out into the world and experiences the same things that I tried to protect him from. And, you know, it's, um, and it's, e it's real easy for us to try to, especially being in the church, you don't want everybody to see all these bad things that are going on. So you try to protect them, but when you protect them, you protect them in the all, all in the wrong, in the wrong ways, right, to where you enable them. And it, the reflection is more on yourself than it is on him. And it's a uh, the surrendering process 
and for for us is actually opening up this circle and allowing other people that were stronger into that circle to come around us and and bring the protection and then the love that we needed at that time be you know be doing it on our own we were making it worse and you know it's the surrendering and it's the continual praying for him and not giving up on him and showing him that we love him but we're not going to allow the things that are destroying him uh destroy the family and uh, thusly we had to do some hard things but by doing those hard things um he did he did he is now we have a relationship and you know like i've shared before uh, i think it took until i was like maybe 30 35 somewhere in that range where my father did come around and actually told me that he loved me you know um i make a point of uh, expressing, uh, you know, unconditional love to my children uh, whenever uh, it deems, you know, necessary at the time. And, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, I just love this, uh, um, that prodigal son and then the story, uh, you know, our, our church has actually a, a ministry that's called prodigal. And uh, it's, it really helped me a lot and going through these hard times. <clears throat> what is the, is a ministry based off of some, um, is it a ministry your church has just come up with or is it based off some other ministry or leverages some other ministry? Well, it was uh, uh, one of the uh, mem members of uh, our congregation um, actually lost uh, his child to suicide um, after, you know, drug, drug abuse. And, um, you know, it just kind of, uh, you know, rose up from that where he uh, felt uh, his place to where he uh, needs to step up and tell other people and give people the support that they need, um, you know, all the struggles that they had going through that process. And, it's a weekly um, ministry, and I, I mean, there's hundreds of people that are going. It's uh, mm. it's it's really good. Yeah, it sounds great. It sounds awesome. I, mean, there's, I don't know if uh, if you guys are um, familiar with Man in the Mirror. Um, mm -hmm. but they've yeah. got a, a model or a process called No Man Left Behind model. And uh, I was just talking to a group yesterday afternoon about this, uh, our United Methodist men, um, about five types of men. And that's one of the, uh, the wide, deep uh, spectrum of where people are on their spiritual journey. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's men who need Christ, and that's really what we're talking about here today, uh, and how you identify that men or women, right? But our whole, our whole purpose, the whole purpose uh, that they uh, base the model around is our churches aren't discipling people the way that people need to be discipled, right? Uh, they're making workers instead of, um, instead of praying for workers and making disciples. So uh, discipleship is what they call a point of priority. And um, anyway, uh, just whatever it was just reminded me of, <laughs> of that. Um, so, so maybe this doesn't maybe this doesn't apply to you directly or or your your children. But uh, think about how would you answer this question in light of people that God puts across your path, right? So, what can you do to begin to believe or help others to believe that God has not rejected you or them, but instead He has a plan and a purpose for you, no matter what you've done. Or where you gone astray? How can we how can we share these things? Like, obviously, this prodigal ministry is sharing um, those kinds of things. I would imagine, right? Uh, I'm sure there's lots of other uh, well, there's lots of other Bible scripture. There's you know, the story of the prodigal son himself in the, in the Bible. 
in the gospel. Anybody else? Jonathan, you had your coffee yet? Are you awake? Scott, yes, sir. I'm awake. I'm, I'm, I'm here. It's yeah, not just, nearly as early here as it is for Brother Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we kind of make it kind of make it a little later for ourselves so we can sleep in. And... <laughs> Sorry, Carl. That's okay with me, brothers. Absolutely. It's okay with me. <laughs> Carl, Carl's ready to start his day this time. Of there, day, there is really no place I'd rather be than right here doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, That's awesome. You know, on the, on the question that you just asked, James, um, you know, and I want to get first thing I want to say, I, I give what I'm getting ready to tell you guys all praise to God. We had our meeting, yes, uh, you know, last Saturday, and um, we were still talking about some human trafficking stuff and porn use and all this kind of things. And, you know, the, the programs that I'm in at my church, Clean Waters, Purity Group, and we've got a discipleship program. Well, right after this meeting, I go to a men's Bible study class. And in that Bible study class, we normally just talk about Christian and godly things. Um, it's not one of the, it's not a Bible study where we go and dump our trials and tribulations out on each other and try to get iron sharpening iron that way. It's more focused on the Bible. But after coming to this meeting last Saturday morning, I went to my other meeting and during the meeting, the Holy Spirit was challenging me to challenge the men of that Bible group. And there was an opportunity arose from the situation where a question was asked and what should we do to reach out to other people? So I took it and I told them that I knew that there were men that were in that Bible study class with me that morning that were having issues and that they were afraid to step up and speak to anyone about them. But I was offering them a way out. The Holy Spirit was telling me that I was to reach out to that group. And before I got through speaking, I got a private chat from a brother that just said, I need help. Mm -hmm. So um, I wound up giving him my telephone number. And after the meeting, uh, we called and talked with each other. And I invited him to my Clean Waters Purity Program at the church, not mine, but the church's. And he showed up Thursday night for our Zoom on the Clean Waters program. And so what we have to do is we have to be, and that's what I've been praying for, is for God to give me the, the boldness of Paul and the zeal of Peter. And um, we got to step out. And it just makes me so happy that as far down in the pit as God had to reach to pick me up, he's still willing to use me for this kind of stuff. And so that's why I say, you know, getting up at 530 in the morning to spend time with him before I come and spend time with you guys, before I spend time with my brothers at Water of Life. And then before it's time to, you know, get up and face the day with my wife, by the time she gets up, I'm ready to go. Um, and, and I just love you guys for being here. And, you know, I'm on so many of the different threads within PK and then I'm on my clean waters and the discipleship program. Um, I found that if you stay immersed in the word of God, it's hard to, to go astray, but he's that, that roaring lion is still walking around all day long, trying to devour you in some way. So, you know, this really helps me get my start on the day. He's going to talk about the roaring lion, aren't you? And you got a story about the roaring lion from Pastor Art recently? Uh, I, I, what I was going to say is, I, it, you know, this conversation, particularly with Carl, just uh, takes me back, takes me back to an old E.V. Hill message. Now, E.V. Hill is one of the old-time PK speakers, but uh, he, ha he has this one where he carries this Bible with him in his back pocket, and whenever the whenever the devil rears his ugly head. His suggestion is just to hit the devil, and it, it, it just hit him, hit him, <laughs> hit him, hit him, you know, uh, hit him with scripture, and as what Jesus did, that you know, in the uh, with the temptation of forty days, the devil ran. So that same principle still applies to us today. Uh, we can we can hit the devil with scripture, 
The devil's got no choice but to run. I say yeah. big amen to that. <laughs> Yeah. I think one of the things I think one of the things we can do to help to encourage others that God still has purpose for them, no matter how dark and how beat down they are in life, is to do exactly what Carl's doing, and that's to share our testimony of us being in the pits mm-hmm. and you know Christ reaching out for us. And just encourage that as long as there's breath in their lungs, you're here for a purpose. If your purpose was fulfilled and there was no longer a need for you, you wouldn't be here. Have you guys, uh, have any of you guys seen the movie The Overcomer? Yes. By the uh, the Kinsey Brothers or the Kinsey Brothers? Kendrick Brothers. Yeah, Kendrick Brothers, yeah. Yeah. I think that was that was so powerful in this that it didn't really have anything to do with well it did have to do with the, the prodigal the father was the prodigal in that case right I think yeah um, but uh, what struck me here is you know what can we get, what can we do is uh, the counselor for the little girl the the girl that runs track in that movie uh, had a counselor and she had a, I guess she was going to a Christian school uh, but um, so the counselor was Christian and led her to say, go read Ephesians 2. Here's a notebook. Write down every every time it says, I am or you are. uh, Mm -hmm. You are beloved. You are redeemed. Um, There's a a video series that I want to do with you guys, if you don't mind, after um, after we get through with this message, if you guys want another eight weeks or so we've got for four or five weeks left so i'm looking for things how do you guys want to uh extend our time if you want to extend our time um in the app and or the zoom but um that those this uh it's it's called our we've got a a partner in pk uh it's mighty men of god mighty men they have a mighty men prayer movement they're calling for uh, a million men to be in prayer together um and I don't, I don't fully understand yet whether that's all at one time or throughout the week or, you know, because, you know, we could have, we could have prayer going around the world 24 seven and, and guys, you know, maybe at 11, 11 or at 7, 14 or whatever in your time zone, you pray and God is just going to hear all that praise all day long. Uh, that's one way to do it. Now that's, that's not saying that's even James's way or really what's right or wrong, but um, but this it's a it, this is a, a video series that is just so high quality, so well done. Um, and and um, I was showing that um, last week. Well, I, I've got a group. I'm showing that with my uh, United Methodist Men leaders in the Northeast jurisdiction that we have. And um, so we're going through that. I've been through it with uh, with PK as an ambassador. We have access to that uh, video series, but. You're kind of going through it on your own, and when I went through it on my own, I decided, hey, this would be really something really great to do with a small group of guys. Um, and then you can you can take it and share it. It's kind of turnkey, but the videos are like somewhere between 12 and 20 minutes, or 15 on average minutes. And um, and then you have a discussion about it, and then you have a prayer, right? And it's model prayer. Um, You know, I've always modeled prayer as as ACTS, acts, right? Adore, confess, uh, give thanks, and then supplication. Uh, And this one is more like, uh, you know, praise upward to God, uh, and then confession inward to ourselves, and then then pray outwardly for others. So it's up, in, and out in three-dimensional prayer. Um, and this is a, a model. It's the same model as you see in the Lord's Prayer. Um, <clears throat> but just saying, I want to share that with you because uh, a couple of weeks ago we were doing uh, that that with that UMM group, and you know we went through the uh, this uh, how God pursues us, uh, even if you're in, in how we should be pursuing God. But it was you know we. Um, Pursuing our identity in God, 
I think was the name of, is the name of that one, that title, that particular session. And um, it goes, it, it basically goes, I don't know the, the, all of these, but there's 29 different IMs in Ephesians 2, 3, there may, that may be 90% of them, and they may have gotten one or two from somewhere else. But if you go through Ephesians 2 and Ephesians 3, uh, there's at least 29 in there that, that were called out in this video series, and it's it's pretty telling. So we've got a little exercise that we do, and I'll save that for later. But um, just to, I mean, just uh, it's one thing that you can maybe introduce people to and just say, hey, you know, you don't have to tell them to go read the Bible, either, right? Hopefully and eventually they will do that. But uh, if they're prodigal, just tell them, hey, God loves you. I've got a friend uh, in Louisiana who um, every time you see him, every time he greets you, has anybody told you they love you today? Mm -hmm. Jesus loves you and so do I and there's nothing you can do about it. Is that powerful? Yes. Yeah. It's powerful to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love, I love, uh, his name is Joe Kelly. I love Joe. Um, anyway, sorry to get a little bit off track there, but uh, there's, there's all kinds of things that we can do um, to encourage others uh, where, where they may not be understanding the plan and the purpose for their life. So uh, kind of finish this up. What, what, can, what can we learn from Andrew and Lewis, um, Luis Palau about consistently loving those that have fallen away um, from the, um, and then loving them with fatherly grace, the way that reminds them that God has not rejected them either. And what can we do to encourage them to understand that God still has a plan for their life, even that, even that they would serve in the kingdom? You know, each and every one of us here, I don't know if any of you are actually pastors or clergy, but um, you don't have, I, I probably told you guys this story too, but you don't have to be ordained to be serving in the kingdom, right? God does call each and every one of us to be a priesthood of all believers, right? So if you're a believer, you're in the priesthood, and therefore we should be ministering to others to our to those that are believers as well as those that aren't um, and so uh, thanks for being faithful Carl um, uh, on that on that call and if other guys have um, stories like that I bet you do yeah it is it is all about him just it's just loving God following his lead as so I'm telling you right now I'm I, I that's not me <laughs> that's not me to do that that all came from God every bit of it came from God um, and, and, you know, you're talking about the, the statements in Ephesians there. Yes, it's, it's very powerful to go through and, and just realize who God is, to realize who you are, because we've been lied to so much of our life about who we are. Um, we have to put those things aside and see what God says we are. If he can, if he can use me for a ministry, he can use anybody. And... I've heard people say that in my past <laughs> and I thought, yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, but now I'm in that position and I praise God that it, it is that way. I really do. Yeah. I like to say if, if God can use an ass to speak to people, then he can certainly use me. <laughs> What'd you say, James? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that if, if he can use an ass to speak to, I was in college saying that I was pointing that to the Bible, not the <laughs> it's like I would he can even, that he can even but use that was cool me. From you. <laughs> oh, I'm that sorry. Was awesome. That was just that was just that was great. Timing, I guess. I love you, brother. No, no, that was that was perfect timing. <laughs> I don't feel I don't feel about you guys like that at all. Um, but I do feel about like about myself like that sometimes. Um, that you know, I'm gonna ask to my wife, I'm gonna ask to people around me when I get. Uh, irritable. Um, this is not one of those mornings. <laughs> I just hope God will use me always. Um, this is what so, you call fellowship. Yeah. Amen. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> so what can we do next? Um, I'm, I'm going to read these and you guys have already given a lot of good answers, but uh, this is for the completion of the Bible study thing for today. Can 
or, or for this this session because we did we do still have the other one that we can uh, do pretty quickly as well. Uh, take to, to, so take a step to encounter God's grace on your life. That God has not rejected you as a son, and that He still has a plan and a purpose in it for your life, even to serve in the kingdom. Talk to other men in your life who have found a way to love their wayward children through the heart of a heavenly father. And then reach out to your lost children and family members with humility and create an opportunity to re-engage the relationship with grace, belief, and encouragement that God has a purpose and a plan for all of our lives. That sounds like a good prayer to me <laughs> to close out this um, this particular message. Um, any other ways that you guys, um, anything else that God has laid on your heart that you want to do, uh, you can put it, maybe put it in the chat also that we can <clears throat> maybe go back. I haven't quite figured out how to use things that get put in the chat though to, um, I, I don't know if when you, I haven't even gone back to see if when you replay the recording, if you can get to the chat, I doubt you can, so, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, it's there, and I do keep it. I do record it. Uh, there is there's a separate file for the chat, though. Um, <clears throat> but anybody else have any uh, thoughts on this? James, I have a uh, pastor friend who is so evangelism oriented, uh, but he has not had success bringing his own son around. And let me tell you what, that, that is, that works on him. Because if anyone should, if anyone should see a positive role model or a positive influence, it's his son. But he hasn't, last, best of my knowledge, he still has not turned his life over to God yet. And and Bud's been at Bud has been wrestling with this for 30 years. And I guess it's the and what I've tried to, to say to him is it's not our job. It's not your job to save everybody. And maybe the message needs to come from somebody else, uh, a different perspective, if you will. But you cannot, and that's one of the points of the video, you cannot give up on a person and just write them off. You've got to keep continue to pray for them. You've got to continue to show them who God is in and through your life. But he, uh, he's wrestled with this, you know, since they wanted this boy's existence. Yes. Yeah, I've, um, I've had experiences like that too. Um, just real quick, I had a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force when I was, uh, I think, a captain. Um, and <clears throat> you know, he, was, he was struggling and he was trying to be a believer as best he could, but he had a, his wife was. I think going a little um, off the wall, and um, she believed in aliens, and they had like antenna uh, uh, foil all over everything in their house. And, um, but anyway, he was he was having a mental breakdown, and, and I, God somehow put him in my life. And I thought, well, I I got to fix this, right? <laughs> well, I, there was, I I I learned after you know I don't know if it was a six months or a year, but um, I wasn't going to reach him. But there was a lieutenant, a guy even younger than me. Uh, who had come alongside him as well. They worked in, they worked in the same office. And, so they're probably closer that way too. But um, the lieutenant guy, you know, the, you know, God worked through the lieutenant instead of James. It was like, well, that broke my heart. I was like, I should be able to. <laughs> it's not me. It's not about us. It's about God. And, what, and God's going to do the, uh, God's going to do the, where did I, Eric? This is a, a treat. <clears throat> um, anyway, um, I want to do a right quick here because I just had a God moment. Yeah. Ed, your comments, what you just said about 
this guy not being able to bring his own son there. Um, the Holy Spirit just leads me. I'm sitting here with my Bible in my hand, and I was like, I know there's something that needs to be said there about that. And this is in Luke chapter 4, and it's in uh, verse uh, 24. It said, Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. You know, so a lot of times, I mean, that's why Jesus didn't go preach there. He sent the disciples and everything else. Is it, it takes the seed sometimes from other people in order to touch that person. And so um, I just like, thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing me that because it would be hard for me to, to go disciple some of the people in my past. Uh, I'd be more like the Saul. They'd be like, what do you think you're doing? You're crazy. I'm not listening to you. Welcome, Eric. Uh, we haven't seen you in a couple of weeks, so welcome, Eric. welcome back. Uh, Eric was with us on our first day when Carl and I were here together, and um, we started to pray and and uh, try to pray for bring for God to bring more guys online, and we picked our heads up, and Eric was there. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so welcome. Yeah. You're from uh, Uganda, is that right? That's right, that's right. Awesome. So we are now worldwide. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, uh, for joining us. Uh, what time is it over there? Um, five. five. It's 5 p.m. Five. five. Okay. Well, oh, sorry, just... I'm late. I... Go ahead. I was just saying, uh, we were just finishing up the Lewis uh, and, and Andrew Palau story and that uh, thing. We're going to go into the World Vision um, message that uh, Edgar Sandoval um, gave, uh, if that's all right. Uh, but uh, you can certainly, hopefully you've been able to go back. I know the time change is crazy between us, but hopefully you've been able to go back on the PK app and uh, look at some of the videos and participate uh, in some of the messages that way. But, um, how, how are things going for you lately? All right, well, um, as I try to find, find uh, the Edgar Sandoval part here, um, we still got John Eldridge left. That's going to be and uh, David Harris. <clears throat> so we got another one or two that might combine in, a, in the same week. But uh, and this is the first time I've tried to do this, guys. So uh, bear with me. I hope it's not a. I hope it doesn't take us um, too far astray from our thoughts and our prayers that we were just on with the Palau story. But uh, I I think this one kind of dovetails at least in in a way that we can reach others. Um, <clears throat> Edgar Sandoval. Uh, tells the story of, of uh, how he came to a PK. I think his boss brought him to a PK conference back in the 1990s, and uh, he didn't know God. He was uh, a, a man who needed Christ at the time. And, um, and it says, in his experience growing up, male spiritual leaders were really missing in action. The definition of manhood was completely upside down. And in Matthew 25, 40, it says, the king will replay, uh, truly, I, truly I tell you, whatever you do, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So Edgar shows the story of how his boss led him to Christ and it began the journey of him following Christ, including a huge awakening experience at the Promise Keepers event. Um, so he encourages us that as we surrender the God to the God's spirit, to God's spirit, uh, no matter the difficult times we're experiencing, God uses it to move us into alignment with a calling to be ministers in his kingdom. So we were just talking about this, right? The priesthood of all believers. Uh, I don't know. I didn't plan that. I didn't plan that connection. Uh, it's just one of those God things, maybe. Uh, Edgar's amazing journey from being introduced to Christ by his boss to experiencing surrender at Promise Keepers Conference to becoming a leader of a globally impacting ministry is incredible. 
You guys agree? That's a, that's a God story in itself. How does his story inspire and encourage you that God can do something incredible in and through your life and your career as you surrender to him? Oh, and also, Scott, I see you posted a video. If you want to tell us what's what's in that video, you, you did it early on, so I'm forgetting maybe where we were at that stage. It's just a trailer for the movie that you referenced. Oh, The Overcomer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Thank you. For yeah, I that. thought it would pop up, but it just is just the link. So. Uh, to thank you, Scott. You're <laughs> all the. Um, postings that you put up that's uh, amen. yeah yeah so amen I, to that i was trying to get that and i would i had is there a a link to your you mentioned the mighty men ministry i was trying i found something but i don't know if it's the right one i was gonna um, it's mighty men movement dot org slash video I okay think. all right and uh, there's you. there's another link there's another link that uh, i'd like to give you that has PK um, has a PK support piece to it. Um, so uh, if you let me let me let me find that link as you guys talk, and I'll I'll put that in the chat. But, uh, I missed yeah. that, uh, James. Who's who is behind that uh, particular program? So one of it's one of our regional it's our regional ambassador, uh, PK ambassador in California. He's actually okay. over the Southwest region, which includes. Um, Arizona, California, Hawaii. I forget what the other one is, Nevada or something. I forget, I forget it off the top of my head, but um, there's four states. And, um, you know, one of them's in Hawaii. So I've told him, you know, anytime you need to go out there, I'll, I'll carry, I'll come to California and then I'll carry your bags from there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've been to Hawaii a couple of times. And I've actually been to Hawaii three or four times. So one of them was I was there on, on the ground for less than 12 hours. <laughs> it's a long way to go from DC area or Ohio to, uh, to Hawaii and back. And I'll only spend, I, I mean, I got to go for like a 30 minute run on the beach. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, off the plane, briefed some generals and then took a, took a run, took a nap and got back on an airplane. But, um, I did, I did take, I was, a, I was blessed to be able to go there for 11 days and then I was ready to come home <laughs> from there. Um, it's a nice place to visit, but I'm, I'm a country boy and I don't, I don't like not being able to have the land <laughs> to go where I want to go. But uh, <clears throat> that's just a personal problem. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, thanks for posting that. And uh, Is that the right, is that the right one? Mightymenmovement.org? Let me, uh, let me look up let me open the chat. Yeah, mightymenmovement.org and then slash video will take you to that. But uh, again, oh. if, if I can, uh, let me find, or Ed, do you mind looking for that? I know Miriam sent it out on, on base camp. Uh, I can, uh, I'll take a look for it. Hang on a second. Yeah, I think it's in the message board on our, on our base camp. Um, and we, if you can just post a link, that'd be great. Because um, that, that way, um, uh, and I want to take you guys through that. I've paid for it's like forty dollar donation to uh, to be able to stream this the series for guys that you want to stream it for and uh, and use it. Um, and so I want to stream it for you guys. And then if you want to stream it for other people in order for you to get access and show it, you you donate the forty dollars. But uh, I think twenty of that will go back to Promise Keepers Ambassadors um, when when people do that. If you use this particular link, so that they know. That, um, that you're working with Promise Keepers or Promise Keepers Ambassador. Um, but anyway, it is a, it is a, it truly is a powerful This is the reason I was asking tool. about it. Oh. <laughs> because yeah. uh, I, was, I didn't know if there was an association. Now I know that there's not, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, his name is Casey Dickey. He's in right. Fresno and he's got a, a ministry, um, guys all over. He's got his own prayer ministry, and then he's also regional field director for Promise Keepers Ambassadors. Um, so maybe back to the question I asked, because I I, uh, I overstepped it. Uh, how does how does Edgar's story inspire and encourage you that God can do 
something incredible in and through your life or career uh, as you surrender to him. You know, I, um, have, creating a, a safe place for men to be able to, um, you know, like Carl nailed it, you know, being bold, um, being authentic is, is the, pro the first step of healing. And, um, you know, by somebody stepping up and being a real man, like what Carl uh, did, it's, it's not in us to do that. It, it's God that is speaking through us, is calling us to step up and be men and to call others into a uh, relationship with him. And sometimes it takes, uh, like what Jonathan, Jonathan was, uh, and Ed were talking about is our testimony. And uh, by us um, speaking up and telling about our brokenness, um, other men will also feel um, the openness to, to have that safe place that now they have a platform to where they, they too can identify with, uh, with us and actually, um, um, you know, start that repentance. Uh, um, you know, I listened to Steve Berger's uh, uh, video again here uh, this morning, um, mm. call to repentance. I mean, that is amazing. And, you know, I th it, it starts, you know, right, you know, being authentic and, you know, brother Carl, you, <laughs> you're amazing, brother. You know, I, it's, oh, uh, um, you know, and it's you guys, it's being consistent. You know, it's not just here, it's in our house. You know, once that we've decided that our relationship is with Christ, you know, we drew a line in the sand and yeah. we chose to go there. It's being consistent. And, you know, for me, um, uh, I've, I suffered so much with this slow fade and, you know, I love James four, seven through eight, submit yourself then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you, come near to God and he will come near to you. So that last part of it right there is when I come to God, he's here. And I, you know, that's when I feel protected. It's when I choose to drift off and it and usually it's because of isolation so i need to have other people that are speaking into my life to see that i'm fading out and you know it's men like what carl is talking about is stepping up and saying hey you <laughs> and you know that's uh um that's where i'm at uh, with all this you know uh, I just thank you guys for being there for me. Amen. Uh, amen. I, I completely agree with you. And, you know, Carl is, you know, a fine example of exactly how God works in our lives. And it starts with, you know, what Carl talks about all the time is he's uh, starts his days on his knees and he's in God's word. And he is throughout his day chasing after God. And, you know, he, he's seen that he's seen God's work in his life. And, you know, like James said, the slow fade where, you know, the routine winds up happening or the comforts of our life or the distractions of all the pretty things in this world and everything start to try to lure us away that, you know, we just need to follow Carl's example and just fall on our face yet again and crawl back on the altar and seek after Christ. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you, when you go <clears throat> out to eat in a restaurant or, um, or you're out in, in public, um, pray. Um, yeah. Somebody reminded me in the, in the uh, prayer challenges last week that you know, praying with your wife at the dinner table is, uh, is still praying with your wife. Uh, she at least knows that you're uh, willing to spiritually lead. Spiritually lead. I'm here this this uh, this week with my family, my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and um, her friend, and my my wife. And um, I don't know for some reason they just always they ask me to sit, they ask me to pray for 
uh, our meals. And it's just, it's an awesome honor to do that, but it's also uh, uh, thinking about doing that out in a restaurant or something. My wife and I usually pray uh, when we're at a restaurant, but I've got a friend who always, always asks the waiter or the waitress, is there anything that we can pray for you? Um, I know Coach Mack used to do that um, and, and Coach Wardell, <clears throat> um, but it, it, this, you know, Mark is another one of our regional field directors in the uh, mid-south central, which is where Jonathan is. Um, <clears throat> and James, I'm, I'm sorry, I forget exactly where, which state are you from again? Uh, Texas. Okay. So Mark, so Mark is the regional director. Uh, hopefully you guys will, hopefully you guys are going to meet um, uh, Dave Iverson pretty soon, who's in, in our, our state uh, director in Texas. But uh, I should have those guys come online here sometime, some mornings, probably and introduce them. What was um, his name again? Dave Iverson. Okay. Uh, and he's looking for prayer warriors for the stadium event in July, by the way. Um, he's ahead of uh, it's like the captain for the prayer and evangelism team uh, for the event, as well as being a state director and as well as having his own uh, ministries and, um, and small groups and working with veterans. He's a veteran and works with veterans. So uh, anyway, maybe I'll ask him to come on. Uh, Ed is Ed is our, our uh, you know, Southeast. He's our, our, I'm not sure, official title is something like deputy or the, assistant. Uh, uh, or assistant director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm I'm involved more in the administrative work than than anything else. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, I don't know about you, James, but <laughs> we need we need ambassadors to, to go forth to to, to uh, talk to uh, churches and ministries. It, it, it's tough. It's been tough sledding. Yeah, but we're not recruiting here. We're just <laughs> I'm just sharing with you. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys, we're just, we're glad to have you uh, to, to and, and be of some service, maybe, um, but you guys are also being service to us as well, encouraging us. So, uh, so yeah, I did post the, um, I did find it uh, and post the thing. I can, I can try to post, I'll see if I can post a PDF in the, um, in the, in the PK app that, that has that same link and it tells you a little more about it. Um, I'm not sure with my Android if I can post that, uh, but uh, if not, then maybe I'll send it to somebody that has a, I know has an iPhone. And I can, uh, I can do that. I, that that's, okay. that's not a problem. Yeah, that same, that same PDF that's in that folder for Mighty Men on, on our base camp. Okay. Uh, that PDF would be nice to have in the PK app for this. Uh, okay. And we can start talking about, you know, the, the, the after the four weeks that we have left, I think it's four, maybe five weeks that we have left. Um, that we want to do that as well, that uh, Transforming Prayer series. But, um, sorry, I keep getting off track. Um, and I know we're coming up on time, and I want to have time to pray. So, uh, well, actually... A hey, quick challenge much. for everybody. I know this sorry? is Super Bowl weekend, and I know that there's a lot of people out there that's going to be partying, and they're going to be <laughs> hooping and hollering for their team. I challenge each and every... There you go. I challenge each and every one of you at some point during this weekend go to your garage, go to your backyard, go to somewhere. And I want you to praise God the way you praise your team. Hey, amen. amen. Do it for five yeah. minutes. Just go give him the glory. Yeah, yeah athlete, amen. athletes in action have a, a, a great prayer breakfast that might be going on this morning. Um, and it's, it's virtual. I just, I didn't, I didn't uh, put a link, put it on my calendar yet. But um, anyway, so to finish up Edgar Sandoval's story here, how can we, and I'm just going to read these questions and we can, and then we can pray about them, right? Uh, how can you, how can you uh, be not only a hearer of God's word, but a doer of God's word also? How can you make a sacrifice to provide health and hope to the underprivileged that world vision can reach and serve on your behalf? Uh, and then in the, what can I do next Portions. There's a uh, www.worldvision.org slash PK, or you can text EMPOWER to uh, 56170. Um, I'll, uh, 
uh, and do that today to get involved, to donate, and to sponsor a child with World Vision. Um, look for and pursue ways to be a man of action, caring for the least of these in your community and around the world. And then uh, thirdly here is uh, join with a community of brothers and commit together to sponsor a family of children around the world who need their basic physical and spiritual necessities met, uh, who can find their hope in God through your generosity. Uh, so uh, that is sort of a trying to awaken guys to the fact of not only, you know, like we did a few couple weeks ago on the International Justice Mission, uh, but this is another one of those key uh, partners uh, with Promise Keepers and World Vision. Uh, so we're trying to reach out to the, the least of the, the underprivileged people in the world. So um, hopefully you'll consider that, pray about that. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. If you, I'll leave it open again. So if you guys uh, each want to pray a one minute prayer, uh, feel free to do that. If, uh, if you have to go, like Carl, maybe you want to start. If you have to go, um, then that's, that's fine. All right. So let's go, let's go to the Lord and be in an attitude of prayer. Father God, I thank you for these men this morning. And I just praise you for being here with us, Lord. You tell us together in your name and you'll be there amongst us. And I can feel it, Lord. I think these other brothers can too. Thank you for the dedication of us uh, that have been here. And Lord, we thank you for our brother Eric coming back in this morning. Uh, it's always nice to, to see our friends' faces, Father. We thank you for... Scott's diligence and putting these links up for us and being on top of that stuff. And Father, I just thank you for the encouragement of Ed and Jonathan and James. And I thank you for my brother Thomas that we have our discussions that we do on our threads there. Lord, I just thank you so much for these men. And I thank you for being in my life. And I thank you for opening my heart up to you. And just bless us with a good week in Jesus' name. Yeah, just make sure if you want to pray, come off, come off mute and pray, um, or you can just pass. It. Lord, I just lift up uh, this weekend, especially. Um, I know with sex trafficking that we talked about, that actually I learned that the Super Bowl weekend is one of the biggest sex trafficking times, and I just pray a hedge of protection around that whole thing and lift up the name of Jesus. We bind Satan from that area and we ask, Lord, that you continue to do your mighty work through your people, Lord Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to guide and direct um, our families and especially those who are struggling with uh, family members who are, have walked away from the faith. And we lift them up to you today in your precious name. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and worship you. Lord, uh, as uh, we uh, surrendered our lives to you, Lord, there was a radical change that happened, Lord. We just pray that, uh, that uh, other people can see you through us, Lord. Just use us to be uh, real godly men in this upside down world, Lord. And to step up and be bold and authentic, Lord. And we just thank you for uh, James, his time as a leader to uh, uh, to invest and encourage us, Lord. And uh, all the extra time that he puts in for this, Lord. Just uh, ask that you bless him in abundance and his family, Lord. And uh, we just pray that uh, that you just lead us by your spirit to to a bigger place, Lord, that, uh, that we can be consistent in our lives, that other people are drawn to us, not because of who we are, it's because who is in us, Lord. Just bring that out and allow us to be used by you, by the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Father, we just come before you, and we're just so thankful for promise keepers and the way that they are actively engaging men. And we just thank you for all the great things that are coming out of the marriage challenge where yes. 
husbands are just seeing different ways to to love their wives, to serve their wives, Father. As you intended, we were never meant to rule our wives, but to love and support our wives, Father. And we just thank you so much for that resource. And, you know, we, we thank you that over 800 men have come together on the app and are engaging in conversation they're actively praying and completing every daily prayer father and we just thank you so much for the abundance of men that have came on to the pk app over the last six weeks father it's just so encouraging and we thank you for this time that we've had together that we get such great encouragement for my brothers in Christ to where whenever Carl shares what he goes out and does. And that just, that adds fuel to my tank and encourages my heart father, just to remain diligent in prayer and in reading of your word, father, that no matter what my daughter chooses to do, that I will continue to pray for her. And I will continue to love her, knowing that the decisions are ultimately up to her, Father. In your name we pray. Lord, I give you thanks for uh, staying this time together and the technology that uh, is available to bring us together. This would not have been possible had it not been um, for the the world situation that we live in. So my prayer today is for the uh, prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters in our lives, that we can just uh, do our part and do everything we can to reach them with your life-changing message. Realizing though that they've got to come to their senses by themselves. And uh, we pray that that happens. So uh, as I said, been said before, I give you thanks for uh, Promise Keepers and what the ministry has done, is doing and will continue to do in the lives of men, but not just in the lives of men, but in the lives of uh, families, lives of marriages, We just pray uh, you had your protection over all of us as we uh, try to do your will. And the best prayer I can say today is let your will be done in and through me and in and through us. That's my prayer today. Anyone else want to pray? The Lord, you're an awesome God. The way you bring us together, the things you put in our lives and and, uh, allow us to to, we thank you, for, Lord, for allowing us to speak today and talk about how we can encourage one another and encourage others outside of our group, that you do make us a priesthood of all believers so that we can minister to those who you put in our path. <clears throat> Lord, I just pray that you help us to use what we've learned here today, what we've talked about here today, what we've experienced here today uh, in the lives of <clears throat> others that are dealing with prodigal children or the prodigal children themselves Lord um, in the prodigal from you uh, you always want to you're always pursuing us you're always pursuing them uh, trying always to bring us closer we can never be close enough Lord until we see you face to face in our heavenly realm so Lord there's a spiritual battle going on in our world and <clears throat> it's between good and evil and you teach us how to how to deal with that spiritual battle Lord each and every moment, but it's, and it's only with your strength, with your power and for your glory that we can overcome. We thank you for the I am's. We thank you that you are the I am. 
<clears throat> and Lord, I just pray that uh, that we can be uh, your arms, legs, feet, mouth, ears uh, to those around us and to those uh, maybe who God might be calling us to reach out to and, and save that it might be underprivileged and might not be able to have the physical sustenance that they need, much less the, the spiritual sustenance. Uh, and Lord, if, if, if we're calling uh, any, uh, any in this world to support the efforts like that, like um, our brother Edgar Sandoval at World Vision uh, gives, Lord, that's just an awesome mission. It's an awesome story of how you brought him to where he is today. Uh, so you can do awesome and mighty things in and through us each and every day, but certainly over our lives, because all that adds up to your glory and your presence in this world. So we ask and lift up all these things uh, that my brothers have lifted up to you, and we lift them up in the precious blood of our Lord and our Savior, your Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Uh, hopefully we'll reach out to Thomas this week because we missed uh, missed him. Amen. He kept trying to come on and was having all kinds of problems. But God bless you guys. Have a great week. Eric, great to see you again. Thank uh, you. I think next time I'll try to make it, make it in time because I don't know for some reason the app, PK app does not really get on my PC, my computer. I don't know why. But I think I'll make it I mean in time next week. I'm so sorry I've missed you guys for all this time, no? Or two, I think two or three weeks or something like that. So I'm glad today. It's a it's just I a blessing to have you when you can be here, brother. God bless you. Uh, you. God bless you all. Have a great week. We'll Thank you. Talk Thank you guys. Soon. God bless your week, guys. Have a blessed you. week. Thank you. Go and be the church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>